Hello out there, and today in front of you we have a modified Benchmade Mini Griptilian. And I wanted to make this video today because this is the first Mini Grip that I've actually ever done any kind of acid etch on. And so I wanted to talk about that, and of course the, uh, the other modifications, because there are a few things with this knife that I've done differently or just haven't done before. But also there have been quite a few people asking me about eBay, which is where I bought this knife. And, um, you know, where I buy my knives and how I get them at such good deals. And uh, I want to touch on that a little bit at the end. I'll talk about some of uh, my mindsets when it comes to the amount of time and how I shop on eBay. And also just uh, the things to look for in a knife when you are trying to get the best deal possible. All right, so... Jumping into the knife itself though, here we have a Mini Griptilian number 556 in 154 cm, and you're going to have to take my word on that because the uh, all of the, the markings are etched off of the blade, but this is just the base model 154. And yeah, getting into that acid etch, um, a lot of times when you do an acid etch you can still see some of the, uh, the logos and stuff beneath it when it's done, but with this knife I did not want that to be the case because this knife actually had a company logo on it when I purchased it. All right, so right here in the middle there was this big logo and it said Premier Directional Drilling. And for me that was an eyesore. I did not want that to still be there. So what I had to do was just polish it up as much as I could. I sanded the um, the logo down and then polished it so that all that was really left was just um, a little bit of an imprint. And then when I did the acid etch, I just left it in the acid for a lot longer than I usually do. And that worked out really well because it's completely gone and that was the goal. So then I did the, uh, the stone wash and the stone washing is actually a little bit different than what I usually do. Usually I'll use a combination of different river rocks to, uh, to be my media and that will get the, uh, the result that I'm usually used to. But with this, I used brass. It's my first time using brass and it was just like basic brass hardware that I, uh, I picked up at Home Depot and some brass keys that I had from like, I don't know, some art project or something. And I mixed that with a really, really soft rock to make the media and cushion it a little bit. And then I was really gentle with the tumbling process, which I do by hand, by the way, if you haven't um, if you haven't seen any of my mod videos before. So I'm not really using a tumbler, just doing it by hand. So choosing that stuff um, and the way that I actually shake <laughs> the the knife in the media is pretty important. And it worked out well, I think. I think it came out with a, uh, a bit of a different look from some of my other stone washings. So it's definitely something I will be um, doing again in the future. Yeah, happy with this look. And then moving back, you can see the Anna work that I did on the, um, the thumb studs and then the axis bar and the pivot. So I bronzed all of those up. And then here is our pocket clip. Pocket clip was originally black. I had to strip the black paint off of it. That is pretty hard to do sometimes with these Benchmades. Um, some of the clips, the paint just adheres to the uh, to the metal. Just it's it's stubborn in a couple spots sometimes, and it takes a while to get it completely cleared off. And actually, uh, that's why the uh, the rose gold pattern comes up on the. Um, on the clips is because there's no good distinction. It's not it's not polished enough for you to get the distinction between the the bronze and the purple. So it just starts to blend those colors. And I really like the look of it, so not upset with that one bit. So that's what we have with the clip. And then my big question with the rest of the hardware was what am I supposed to do? Because one of the things that you might be able to see here is you know, sometimes you can get these inconsistencies between shades of bronze whenever you're doing an anno, you know, and, and I knew it would be really difficult to get all of the rest of the screws the same shade, you know, and I didn't want nine different shades of bronze on this knife. So what I did have was some screws that were a little bit stripped, you know, they were like black painted, but then worn. And I thought that looked good. So I actually just forced that look onto the other screws to sort of give the whole thing maybe more of like a, a steampunky kind of vibe. I don't know, but it worked out. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, and overall, I think it does have a good amount of cohesion. Yeah, it looks, uh, 
yeah, it looks pretty solid. And then one last thing that you might have noticed, but probably not, is I did anodize slightly the jimping. And you can really only see it in the light, but when you compare it to just a regular mini grip, you can see the difference in the, uh, the shine of the liners. So, yeah, just a, a little bit of a touch there. So, yeah, overall, pretty content with these results and the modifications. Um, it was something that worked out just really easily, you know, easy to take apart this knife and, and do the work on it. And um, the anno was quick. And one quick note about 154CM, something that's sort of funny is, you know, I'll go for months and months and months without getting any kind of specific questions. And then within a span of a week, I think three people asked me about my opinion of 154CM. And I really like the steel. Um, I like it a lot. I think it's a really good base steel. And I think just the uh, the market is demanding better and better steels. And that's why, um, you know, Benchmade is is improving and using S30V, but there's no problem with this steel whatsoever. And one thing in this process that just really, um, really I took notice of was how easily this knife resharpened to a very good razor edge after I tumbled it. You know, you'll lose that edge, it'll dull anytime you do uh, stone washing and you'll have to touch it up. And I mean, this touched up just as easily as 8CR13. I mean, it took no time, 10, 15 minutes max just to get it back to 100% plus. So really good, really good steel there. All right, so now that we've gone through all of that stuff, let's talk a little bit about eBay and uh, the stuff that I do on eBay and the way that I find knives at good prices. Because to be 100% honest with you, I paid $43 for this knife. 43 bucks, can't beat it. You know, it's like I said, not S30V, not like one of the great high-end griptilians, but $43 for a mini griptilian, it's, it's hard, to, uh, hard to beat that price. So here's what I do, guys. The first thing that you need to know if you are really trying to find a good deal on eBay is you have to put the time in. It's not about going to the website and just shopping and, oh, there's the best price for this knife and let's get it. It's not how it works. You know, that's not how you're going to get the best price. You're going to have to put a lot of time in. I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time on eBay all the time. I look at hundreds of listings probably every single day. Um, generally speaking, in my life, my time is way more valuable than my money. If I'm ever in a situation where I have to spend more money in order to save time, I do it because uh, I don't have a lot of time to myself. But that said, I enjoy the time that I spend on eBay. And that's really the key is you have to really like what you do. You know, and I like being on eBay and going through as many listings as possible and picking out things that are interesting to me and learning about new knives. I can't tell you the number of models and even companies that I learned about just from coming across them on eBay. You know, so the process is something that you have to, to enjoy and I enjoy it. So spending a whole bunch of time on there just with the idea of learning and not necessarily trying to find a specific knife is the way to go. But let's say you're doing that but you don't know what to look for. So here are the things that when you're looking at a specific listing, what will really help you get an idea that it might sell for less than say other similar knives. Because this one, what made me think that it would sell for, for less money and that I should focus on it? Well, first and foremost, that logo. That logo was a huge, huge red flag. And it made me stop and it made me say, okay, this knife is not going to sell for what a mini grip usually will because people just don't want that stuff, right? I mean, you don't want knives that look different from the way they come from factory. And if they do, you want to be the one to, to make those decisions. You don't want some random company's name on there. I mean, the person who works for that company didn't want their, <laughs> didn't want that knife because uh, it's gone. It's not theirs anymore. And personally speaking, I don't want a, a knife with my own company's name on it. So that was the number one thing that that jumped out at me. So anytime you see something like that or any kind of individual and unique modification that, you know, might not be like the, the best job, but just makes the knife look a little different, definitely focus in on that and, and take a closer look. Other stuff that you should really be paying attention to are just the topical parts of the knife. 
that could not, that could look like they're not 100%, but it doesn't really affect the functionality of the knife. So by that, I mean hardware, scales, and the clip. All right, so this knife in the listing, you know, like I said, it did have the hardware that was worn a little bit, but the, the paint on the clip was, was stripped off in a couple spots too, and it just looked older than it was. And that's one of those things that jumps out at people and makes them think, uh, well, this isn't just a, a really good knife. But honestly, half an hour of time and you can have it do 100%. So a lot of people will skip over those knives when you can definitely get the best deals on them. You know, just the look of something at first glance will really help people make their, their decision about it. And so a lot of people will pass over knives like this because of that. You know, also these scales in the pictures were dirty. You know, they just weren't clean. And so I focused on those pictures and I looked and they really looked like they were in good shape. They just needed to be cleaned. You know, there's a scuff right here and um, another one right here in the in the actual texturing. But overall, I mean, these scales are in wonderful shape. I have another set of black scales that I was ready to uh, to swap them out for, and I realized I don't need to do that. So, yeah, there uh, there are a few things that when you're looking at the condition of the knife will turn a lot of people off. But those should be the things that you are honing in on. And then when you find that listing, when you find this listing that has some of those topical, you know, minor issues, that's when you click on the seller's other items. Because if someone is gonna list a knife that isn't in like really good condition and it's dirty, they're gonna do it again. You know, and so those are the those are the sellers that you want to find, you want to follow, you want to see their listings because those are the things that are generally just going to sell below what the standard price is. And I bought a number of other things from the same seller because it was the same situation. So always keep that kind of stuff in mind. For sure, you know, any kind of tutorial on, on shopping on eBay will tell you, hey, look for the titles of listings, anything that's misnamed, or if it just says Benchmade Knife and it doesn't say Griptilian, or if it has something that's spelled wrong, certainly those are things to, to try to capture because less people will be able to find those knives. But when you're looking at the specific listing, just that, that topical condition stuff is really the first place to start. If you're not too particular about it and you're looking for the best deal possible for a knife that will function, that's the way to go. All right, guys. So any other feedback or any other questions about eBay or just the knife in general, let me know. I'd love to talk with you about it. Uh, I certainly am not looking for more competition to find cheap knives, but, uh, but any way that I can help, I will. And any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know uh, in the feedback down below. But I will talk with you soon, and thanks for watching, and take care.